Now then, Charlie here again, in the series where I reveal all my secrets. I went to bed until I was nine. Oh, impression secrets, right. Um, well, you're in the right place if you want to learn impressions such as, uh, Severus Snoop. Tell me fucking show me, right. from the Peaky Blinders. Or old Alec Guinness. Obi-Wan Kenobi. So in the last video, I discussed my impressions journey so far and also the pitfalls that most impressionists fall into. If you missed it, go and check it out. But if you are all caught up, then get ready for this video where I take you through the impressions learning process that I've improved over the last five years. I was going to say perfected. But... From this video onwards, you're going to have the option to vote for particular individual impressions that you want a specific case study to be done on. So make sure you drop a comment in the comment section voting for the impression that you want to learn. The way I'll run those videos is I'll give specific advice for that individual impression and also use it to hone in on one specific skill that is highlighted by that impression. So what I'm going to teach you here is my patented Charlie method for learning impressions. Please drop a like on the video and good luck. Ch. The first thing you have to do is ch ooze the impression that you want to do. Some impressions are more difficult than others. There is a definite hierarchy in terms of the difficulty of impressions, depending on what your natural voice is. As a general rule, anything where a voice is being put on is going to be easier. Example, on the internet, there's a lot of family guy impressions out there, and there are thousands of really good Stewie Griffin impressions but barely any, if if any at all, really good Brian impressions. The reason for that, Stewie is a voice that Seth MacFarlane puts on. It's a caricature English accent. Brian, on the other hand, is pretty much Seth MacFarlane's natural voice. It's a lot more nuanced, a lot more subtle, so therefore it's a lot harder to portray accurately. In terms of real life voices, anything with a strong accent is gonna be easier to get it to stand out. For example, Michael Kay. A good general rule for how difficult an impression is, search the internet. If there's loads of good versions out there, it's probably going to be one of the easier ones. If there's barely any, it's going to be a hard one. So the ethos I generally go for is I try to choose some easy ones and some hard ones. But if you're going to do an easy voice, try and find a way to take it to the next level. Try and make it a cut above everything else that is out there. Otherwise, what's the point? You need to find the nuances that people will really identify with and not have it just be a generic impression. A. Activate the impressions learning process. Okay, good. R. Resources. Before you start, it's important to find the relevant resources. For me, this comes in the form of YouTube videos. You're going to be watching these videos one heck of a lot. It's important they're going to be as entertaining as they can possibly be. When I'm learning impressions from a series or a film, what I'll tend to do is I'll watch it through twice. First one, for enjoyment. Second one, with a keen eye, with a view to learning the impression. So I'll start repeating it with the series or with the film. But then I go to YouTube. <laughs> My personal favorite type of resource is when someone has cut together audio visual clips from the series and then they've put it to quite deep cinematic music. It's entertaining to watch and also I think it elicits just a slight emotional reaction. Humans tend to remember things better when they have an emotional attachment to it. <laughs> the best example I can think of is a video so called The Evolution of Walter White, which is what I used to learn my Breaking Bad impressions. I'll leave a link in the description. This is my favorite impressions learning yeah, video of all time. And I do attribute yeah. what I consider to be some pretty good you Breaking Bad impressions to this video. Probably the main reason I struggle to perfect impressions that don't inspire me. I just can't stand to watch and listen to that person talk over and over again. My Donald Trump impression is awful. Right, when we're talking about these resources, it's important to split them into two categories. Starter resources and finishing resources. Your starter resource if possible, should be another impressionist. One who you think is very good at that impression. Feel free to choose some of my videos if you think that that would be relevant. When I did my very first impression, Morgan Freeman, I used the very well-known Joshua Robert Thompson Impressions Reel video, which was perfect. The reason you use impressionist videos first is because even if it's just slightly, they tend to exaggerate the tone and the accent 
to really sell the impression to you. That makes it easier to pick up for the first time. It's more obvious. It's a form of scaffolding. It'll help you get to the perfect impression. Once you can do an acceptable caricature of the impression, you can use actual clips from films to pick out the little nuances in the performance to really perfect the impression. Finally, your absolute finisher resources are the person in conversation, in interview or behind the scenes little clips. If you get all the way to the end of this, you will have completed the impression. Example, I'm okay at Samuel L. Jackson, but I would say I 30% completed that impression. See what again, I do you. I double did you, motherfucker. I could just about do his lines, it's not perfect. But if you asked me to do anything else, I'd be, yeah. Liam Neeson, I could do his lines pretty well. You've learned to bury your guilt with anger. I'll teach you to confront it, to face the truth. I could do most of his lines from films, I can do a bit of conversation. I'll say that impression is about 70%. Whereas Morgan Freeman. My name is Morgan Freeman. And I do understand, yes, and I do exactly rehabilitated. Well now, let me see. I ain't told me exactly what it was when he sent me down here. Dead end. Place to keep me from causing the board any more trouble. Or even if I was just in conversation. He was talking to you and you were. And you, I'm not saying that it's not what's going on. In all the different styles, that one is completed. I can only do about three or four of those impressions. Dead to rights. L. Learning the impression. You found your resources. Now let's break down how you build up an impression. So the skill of an impression is broken down into four parts. Tone, pitch, accent, defects, and mannerisms. And also rhythm. Six parts. As you go through the process, each one is going to go up at different rates. But unfortunately, it really is a case of trial and error. But every time you listen and try and repeat it, try and think of one and how you're focusing on that aspect. Generally, I'd start with the accent and the tone. You're going to need to listen to your resource about a hundred times to the point where you can replay in your head the exact wording and even the slang that that person uses when they're talking in that phrase. That single phrase you will end up repeating a lot and it will probably end up being the best phrase that you end up reeling out over and over again. Try and choose a starter phrase where there's really clear words that that person hits that you can use to sell the impression. For example, Tommy Shelby, I'm in France. That's one that I used at the very beginning to really try and, that was the word that I hit, France, France, France. When you're watching the video, look at the shape of the mouth and the face while they are producing those sounds. Try and replicate it. For example, Snape. The teeth are clenched and there isn't much movement of the mouth except for the lips. Roll, 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 Mr. Potter, a new celebrity. If you can replicate those movements in general face shape, it'll immediately improve the impression. For accent, hone in the pronunciation of particular words. For example, Classically trained actor like Sir Ian McKellen. Words like grass, bath. Whereas Sean Bean from the north of England. Grass and bath. Too much grass in the bath. What I tend to do is watch the clip and I alternate between just watching and then playing it and repeating along with the clip. This helps me get the rhythm and the cadence. Then I'll go away and in any spare time, I will practice these phrases, usually in the shower. I'll alternate these sessions watching the video and sessions practicing on my own. Then once it's got to a certain level, I'll start to record and I'll listen back and see how close I'm getting. I can use those recordings as a direct comparison with the clips and see what I need to exaggerate more well, where I'm going wrong. It's very much an iterative calibration process. You start out here and finally you hone in as all the pieces come together. Once you have that one phrase and an acceptable level, it's time to extrapolate and start adding more phrases to your arsenal until you can perform a few lines. I innovate. Now that you have a working grasp of the impression, it's time to go beyond the impressionist clips. You should be at a point where you don't really have to think too hard about doing it. You can just reel out a couple of lines that you've practiced for a while. It's now time to add defects and mannerisms. 
For this, you really need to study the actor or person. Defects include things like lisps, and also listen really carefully to the rhythm of the voice. For example, Sir David Attenborough has a rhythm that is very much like a story. A generation ago, the series The Blue Planet took us beneath the waves, but now we know so much more. His rhythm has very definite swells and dips. Someone like Tommy Shelby, very much more staccato for maximum impact. All right, everybody else, we're all gonna go there and it's gonna be fucking good, all right? Now you can go. Body language and facial expressions are really important to get that perfect impression. The shape of the body and the face has a really big impact on the voice that is coming out, the noise that is coming out of the mouth. An example, Gandalf. To me, much of McKellen's voice comes from the eyes. These muscles around the eyes, and if you really get it, it pulls the mouth into a shape that allows you to really sound as a Gandalf. Yeah. Or the swaying body language of Captain Jack Spanner. If you were to try it without the swaying or the arm movements, it's a lot more difficult. It's just... So all this body language and the facial expressions that you're replicating really helps capture the character. E. End. End of the process to learn impressions and also be good at them. I hope that was helpful. Please do drop a like on the video so that more people can see it. And also make sure you're subscribed so that you can see other videos from this series as well as the other content that I produce. Now, it's not all going to sink in at once. There was a lot of information there. These videos going forward are going to be a really good way of hammering in the basics as well as giving specific advice on individual impressions. So drop a comment for the impressions you most want to learn. Let's have a chat in the comments section. I'll try and answer individual queries or stuff that didn't quite make sense to the best of my ability. See you next time.